expected to be able to uh, uh, wrestle it out of everybody's hands and take it. It's yours. And so he knows very well that uh, the expectations are very high at home. So, Zambia in the green attacking the left of your picture and uh, Seychelles in the red attacking the right of your picture. Six times champions. No country other than uh, Zimbabwe has been anywhere close to tell you the success that the Zambians have had so far in uh, the uh, history of the uh, Kusafa Cup champions. Last time around in the expectation as they uh, sit it upon Durban this time around was for them to do well. The stumble in that first game against Malawi. Well, man, just been a pothole on the road to success. Time will tell if that is the case. But all eyes on Zambia and how they conclude this particular group with a major question being, will they be able to secure themselves a place in the semi-finals? What looked like a beauty of a pass to the white side where Siakombo is operating, but he uh, seems to have taken his eyes off the ball. That's the kind of moments that you want to try and use right from the beginning to uh, uh, strengthen your hold onto the game by creating more better moments in the attacking side. Now, Seychelles here with a chance to get some numbers forward. Good movement here on this near side. Ready with a uh, couple of players in the box here. Make that three as the cross comes, shot comes in and it's way too close. In uh, the uh, end then to uh, Francis or rather to the uh, goalkeeper Molenga, I beg your pardon, who has absolutely no problems in picking that up. Camille operating on the right inside is one of those that has really been a, a stand-up player for Mauritius. Always given to going forward and never giving up. Today, behind him is not Mathieu who has been operating, but Pascal, Pascal has been shifted from the central position to the right fullback. And as far as the play here last night and yesterday, there was a huge, huge wind that uh, was blowing from the right to the left of your picture in the angle at which we watched the game here. There's still a wind blowing in that direction, but it's nowhere close to uh, the uh, effects we saw yesterday. So the wind, not as much of a telling factor as what we saw yesterday. In fact, the conditions aren't uh, as uh, much of a thorn on the side as they were of the uh, teams that were in action yesterday. Today is more a day where you can put the ball down and play to your heart's content. It doesn't get any better than this. Yeah. And uh, very warm, which is what you need as a, uh, particularly in the beginning stages of a game. You don't want to take too long to get going. Mm -hmm. So the temperatures like this uh, helps you to get going very quickly. It was cold. It was wet. It was terribly windy yesterday. Bitterly windy. Even when the rainbow did pop out for a little bit of a while, it looked as though the rainbow was taking a bit of a beating up into the clouds, so <laughs> that's how cold it was. And uh, today is uh, almost completely different from yesterday, which we welcome. And uh, besides, of course, the lion action out there will be more grateful for the uh, weather being what it is. Zambia here with the uh, chance of the throw in, hoping for the near post flick on. They'll settle for the corner, stay on the front foot here. As uh, the uh, big men continue to go into the uh, attacking areas. I hope for that little bit of a drizzle has helped so soften up the ground a little bit. You can see it's pitching. I'll tell you the reason why. The number four here for the Zambians and the Indians. A tremendous amount of pressure. The man between the sticks, Michel, did so well to fist that clear when they were all over him. The uh, likes of uh, Shabalawe in the number 21 jersey moved in from a central defensive position. And, uh, well, talk about it getting physical nice and early. As much as you can be so how good as a goalkeeper, but uh, this kind of pressure that is applied against you in the, set, in the case of set pieces sometimes can uh, take its toll on the goalkeeper. Mm. I mean, Siakombo. Uh, on this, so uh, operates on this uh, left wing or left attacking midfield place as uh, the one that got stuck into him uh, from underneath. He's not the biggest, but he used his weight against the goalkeeper to put him off a little bit. Well, uh, looking at some of the uh, top Zambian scorers in uh, the uh, history of this nation at the Kasafa Cup, you've got the likes of Shanga with six goals, Besuma 
with five, Nsofo with four, Kambole with three, Kilambe, Milanzi, another couple of players with three goals. I mentioned James Shamanga a little bit earlier. Two goals he scored for Zambia at the Yakosafa Cup. Now you're making me, you're mentioning Milanzi. Mm -hmm. That's the Milanzi I was talking about. I saw another player from the Zambian side who came in in one of the games, Harry Milanzi. Yeah. And uh, this Milanzi you're referring to is also Harry Milanzi. Oh. Yes. That's why I was like, hmm. You're wondering if one was named maybe after the other? Possibly. Maybe it's junior or something. Possibly. And uh, this, 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 some, this some of the homework that maybe escaped me. It would have been nice to have uh, come to this game uh, having done uh, that little bit of investigation. Now from a Zambian point of view, William Shongwe, in uh, a uh, Zambian international that's been there, done there, or done it all, and just about won everything there is to win, including the Africa Cup of Nations, the Zambians will have been uh, doing a fair well from a playing point of view, that is, to one that's definitely a great, and uh, also a great in your department, one of the great goalkeepers, I think it's safe to say, of uh, African football. And, uh, who, of course, was part of that uh, legendary Zambian side that won the Cup of Nations, as mentioned a little bit earlier, and uh, maybe righted the wrongs of the past, and as far as the football gods doing their bit, and uh, seeing Zambia take up their place deservedly as uh, one of the uh, best on the uh, continent. This young man, or, well, not so young now, at 38, approaching 40, but uh, has had a uh, career that uh, will stand out and stand true in the minds of many that have had the uh, pleasure of not only watching him play and come up with standing saves, but also step up and score penalties in his time as a uh, footballer. That, of course, is Kennedy Mweni, who's, uh, I don't know what to say, hung up his boots or hung up both his boots and gloves. <laughs> well, just hung up both, but yeah. uh, taking on a new career that has been offered at Mamelodi Sundowns, which for me is brilliant for a player that has served you in that respect, in that respect he's got to be honoured so he's going to continue staying in South Africa and offering the other service of being a goalkeeper coach alongside Weldon, Wendell Robinson Paul in Lusaka back in 1984 careers at Lusaka Dynamos keeping United, Free State Stars for a good number of years where we got used to seeing him score penalties and such. And uh, Mami Lodi Sundowns as well, where they uh, went on to take on the continent from a club point of view. Like I said, there's nothing this uh, particular gentleman hasn't won. And, well, I think as uh, the uh, entire Southern African footballing uh, community, including the entire community at large, William Shonga, we all need to be grateful for Kennedy Winnie's contribution to the uh, beautifully southern african game the zambian game and the african game at large and take our hats off to it added to that from what i've seen of him obviously uh, having achieved all this he's still so level mm, humble and, and this is what for me is what young players need to be able to learn and imitate as as well things are going for you but you still got to you know uh, humble and which is a point that uh, brilliant quiz I mentioned uh, when I had a uh, one-on-one -on -one with him a few days back is uh, this career can only last you this long so you've got to be able to think ahead and start preparing yourself while you're still at it but behavior and respect will see you go very far even in future endeavors so then we turn with the cross uh, it won't find any joy for Kennedy Mooney, one time Africa Cup of Nations winner, eight time South African champion, twice South African Cup winner, one time uh, MTV 8 winner, one time Netbank Cup winner, uh, one time CAF Champions League winner, and also a uh, CAF Super Cup winner. <laughs> That's a good list. Five star general. That's a legend. <laughs> <laughs> now, shot from range, again, it's the Zambia is looking to take the game here to the Seychelles, it's wide of. Uh, the uh, mark but the intentions are pretty clear here as far as the uh, men in green are concerned they are looking to make things happen Mulambia with the opportunity that are gone wide well goalkeeper can't get those boots right eh 
a few minutes ago he had to attend to them Alvin Mitchell who plays for wait for it St. Mitchell United <laughs> can't get over that <laughs> Probably the reason why he joined them, because yeah. at least uh, <laughs> he was, sense. <laughs> and also that he's probably going to uh, keep that number one spot. <laughs> how do you, how do you not play the man with the name of the team? Yeah, you're born for this. It's written in the stars. Good hard running in from the uh, Zambians, left and right three. Oh, stretching that defense. Yes, a chance! Flip, flip, bang! Beyond Mitchell. They came with intent, and it's taken them just over 10 minutes to open the scoring with a smashing strike on the front foot. Kagwanda, I think it was. This time operating a little to the right inside, which is as he cut into the inside. That's why it opened up for him. He plays as an inverter today, and initially I thought maybe a bit amb ambitious of him to make that attempt, but listen, he got the sweet spot, and that ball flew like never before. I don't think we've seen a striker like this, except of course maybe from uh, uh, Juja of the Comoros. Brilliant strike. Oh, he hits that well. Finds it in stride here, so I went. And once it's beaten, the defender only has one fault in mind. That's to blast it beyond Mitchell. And uh, in so doing, Kagwanda. Yeah, so the uh, Zambian fans that have turned out here in uh, full voice. And uh, Zambia up and running. Ten minutes is taken for them to open the scoring. The question now is, will they keep going? Here's one thing that I want you to remember and no going forward. I've been talking to the coach about uh, that first game performance in a competition of this nature. You know, the competitions are not all quite together. And one game, obviously, that's where you test it. Then you see exactly where the loopholes are. And with the second game, it gets better. And this is the one game that if they've really been working on it, they should be able to show the character and uh, sweep over the Seychelles. Keep in mind, with every goal that's scored, either here or during the course of this 90 minutes, out at the Moses Mapita Stadium, it'll change the group and how things stand. So, William Chongwen, as things stand right now, it's Malawi on seven, Zambia on six, and Zambia looking for goal number two. But the Comoros are currently third in the future. Zambia shaking things up, and the shot coming in just wide of the mark. They are asking some serious same questions. One of the Seychelles defenses, Kambamba, with the latest of shots. This one just wide of the mark. It's in every time I see the team playing this fashion, it reminds me of the Zambia Vault. That is how they'll dominate the opposition, whether home or away. And it's flood, and after floods and floods of attacks, is how they play. Wow, that took the bounce, and the keeper backpedaled, then saw it come off, I think the keeper, and then the crossbar out for the corner. He's claiming he didn't get a touch, Michelle, but, <laughs> well, he got it completely wrong, just a little bit earlier. The shake-up of that defense to create the yard for the shot, with the left foot going uh, just wide. Now, the Zambians with the corner taken. Another corner it will be. Talk about a positive start inside the opening 15. They're keeping them pinned right back here. Uh, the uh, Zambians not letting up after having grabbed the lead. That's how you can profit from a lead. By continuing applying the pressure. And not to allow the opposition to settle down to uh, any form of rhythm. Keep them on the back foot. Again, Michel will... Feel the pressure, concede another corner. This time it very nearly went in directly from the corner kick. Excellent intervention from Michel. It was dropping inside. And luckily he wasn't sold out to think that ball is going to maybe wander into the six yards area. That's what goalkeepers do sometimes. There's still a bit of ground in anticipation for a wide take. 
fourth corner. Depending on the near post. Another and corner it will be. That's what, a corner with 15 minutes gone by. It's a corner every three minutes. At the rate of which they're moving along. Fifth corner now. Zambia has finally arrived in the Tinko Safra <laughs> competition. Now. Mm, that's determination. That's what's been so impressive with the Zambian side. Just what we saw now. How the Apollo was won back. Just the effort from uh, Ganguluma in uh, running back then and taking charge of the situation. It's uh, well, the Seychelles just haven't been prepared for a Zambian side that's come out there at uh, Super Saiyan 4 level and started the match there and just looking to build beyond that. The last thing you want to do is uh, the Seychelles is to try and uh, release the ball way further up but you know very well in no time it will be back because the numbers up front they're not so convincing. Players leading the attacks uh, cannot can't hold on to the ball any longer because they've been on the back foot so half the team is way back defending Now, the Zambians again pushing forward over that halfway line with some serious intent. Lovely touches uh, coming into uh, effect once again from Kampamba. Now, kept alive with this near side. Seychelles will take the chance. Out. Yeah, they'll love the chance to relieve the pressure. Now, William Shonga, what I love about this uh, venue, the Princess Makoko Stadium, out of the far stand, well, it's not necessarily a stand, is the grass and bark went out there where the youngsters, the fans can sit, chill, find a shady spot if you're looking for the shade or go bask in the sun if that's what you're looking for, but you can enjoy the football in that fashion. Out on the far side, if you're looking for the old grandstand, you can come over to the near side, there's plenty for you to uh, enjoy as far as sitting in the old type of structure. And this one looks right now, but I'm sure come the next game, but final final against uh, the kingdom of Eswatini will have uh, all the crowds are going to swell in that far, far end but also in this near in this near side which obviously will help uh, with the just vibe in the stadium now we just start the uh, tournament off in Umlazi what we did see was that the uh, youngsters with schools being closed coming through for the uh, earlier game especially when the weather allowed but more importantly the uh, adults after work also uh, Popping up to ensure they were there for the uh, six o'clock kickoff in the evening, and uh, this evening, keep in mind, we conclude Group A matters, meaning South Africa will be in action in a game that should provide just a little bit more than just entertainment. William Shongwe, a uh, must win, and uh, the fans should be out in their numbers from both nations, which should be nice. Must win for both. Mm -hmm. The Sotini would like to make it six points. Now, uh, to put themselves in a good spot for that uh, best runner up, that one is always on the cards. Who is going to come up with the best boots to join those four or the three or the other three in the semi finals? Keep in mind, if you haven't kept up with the group, it's a different way of uh, operating this time around in the format of uh, the uh, tournament. Three groups, top three sides to march on through, including the one best runner up. Set piece to the Zambians again. They mean business to a point. They thought about taking it quickly. They're wasting no time in uh, trying to keep things moving after that uh, foul on uh, Sian Combo. I tell you who is busy and who has been impressive, William Shonga, in uh, the uh, early exchanges of this match. And uh, the man wearing the number seven jersey for the uh, Zambians, Kambamba. Shot comes in. But uh, the uh, Zambians are coming in from all angles here. Next shot coming from the uh, goal scorer. And wind up. Alberts. 
plays for Red Arrows Football Club. His third appearance. Started this match having played over 100 minutes for the Zambians at this year's Kusafa Cup. 108 minutes to be exact in the uh, previous two games. Hardly seen much of the uh, Seychelles in the way of uh, the uh, front foot. They've done so much work back on the defensive end of the game. They've hardly been given a chance to push forward. Here they are defending once again as the Zambians are unable this time to keep the pressure on. The right back in Pascal is having a double problem there. You got Siakombo and then you got uh, Kabamba who's joining in. He drifts a whole lot more from his central striking position. He's playing just behind Lubamba but he drifts a little bit to the left in support. So he's got two facing him most of the time. If you talk Pascal is the right fullback. Here's a man who's uh, controlling the tempo of the game quite beautifully. Creatively, he's been on the money in, well, dictating matters here, left, right, or straight down the middle for the uh, Zambians. That, of course, is uh, Gambamba, as I mentioned a little bit earlier. He's had a great tournament up to this point. Now, by nine, the ball in. He's not on the uh, far post, slightly overcut. Good strength to work it away from the danger area, but such is the pressure. Uh, so the uh, Zambians force the error and get the ball rolling once again immediately. Kapumbu, the ever presence that middle of the park, more like the number six of the team. Patient are the uh, Zambians for the uh, time being, waiting for the right run to try and pick out in uh, creating space and stretching the uh, men in red Chase of heads The uh, match referee from uh, Angola, Paulo uh, Sergio. I think the different William Kandawiri approaching that uh, tassel, is he went with his with the mm. side of his head. While Ravinha went straight on with his forehead. So the vet weather the storm. For the uh, most part, they've got themselves a uh, set piece here where there's uh, enough distance to get it up and over, bring it down here, and maybe ask questions of Molenga if you hit it with uh, precision, if the uh, strike is precise. Seychelles looking to pull one back and make life interesting for uh, the uh, neutrals watching on. He is going for glory. Like you said, it's perfect for, for him to go over that wall. Over, but doesn't have the dip uh, to the uh, end of it, including the fact that the keeper would have comfortably shuffled across the cross bench to get in line with it. The uh, strike from uh, Franchette, not causing too many uh, problems then. Man who plays for La Paz FC. He's a third showing in this tournament. He's already played 180 minutes. So he played every minute of this tournament. Which uh, is a bit rare for the uh, men for the Seychelles. I say that because, uh, what, only three of them have uh, done so up to this point. The uh, coach has kept rotating the squad. Franchette is uh, one. Warren uh, Melly. Yeah. The uh, captain is another who's played 180 minutes every minute of this tournament. And uh, also, Norris Ricky Kenner is uh, the uh, other player wearing the uh, number 13. Those are the three players that have played 
every minute of this tournament so far from uh, the uh, Seychelles. Everybody else has uh, had to share the load. There's been a number of changes in just about every game played here. Six coming into this one. There were seven or so going into the last match. Even the goalkeepers have uh, uh, had their time on and off. So, Michelle, who's between the sticks now, coming in uh, off the uh, bench in the uh, second half of the last game for the uh, Seychelles against Malawi, replacing Jean-Paul Lesperance, who was having a good game against Malawi. Keep in mind, Malawi scoring the goals after the uh, change had come into effect from a goalkeeping point of view. And that, I don't mean disrespectfully towards the man on the ball right now. It's just the order of things. It's just the way things went down on that particular day. That's the one, two, then. In the end, they don't quite get it right going into the uh, box. Now, you think that maybe Michelle will pick up the ball and play it immediately forward as their team that is trailing. But let me tell you, they've been under quite a bit of pressure. And they could be just taking this moment to take a breather. Understandably so. Now, they are winning back in a very good area here, the uh, Seychelles. They attempt to try and get it in behind the defense. Perhaps to nothing. And that has been the major thorn in their side here when they have had the ball holding on to it for two or three passes has been quite a huge ask for them which uh, could go back to the reason why you're saying Michelle is in a hurry to release the ball when he has it the goalkeeper you know, that wants to just breathe with the ball in their possession for just a moment and now others will ask what would be the reason the conditioning mm. Zambians are better conditions yeah. uh, Team, they, the, 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 the clubs there are, are professional, so they train, they've got the time. Zambians mm. pushing forward here and looking good while doing so, and in the end, Michelle's involvement is crucial in uh, bringing that uh, attack to a halt. Has it come at some expense? This is always in a fair bit of pain here, Michelle. He had a two or three in opposition colors, including maybe a defender or two, all coming in towards him. He was praying. In keeping his eye on the ball, but uh, I don't think there was any avoiding the clashes yeah. or the clash that might have been kicked followed. in the face. Yep, he had to be brave about that one. He, he knew yeah. it was coming as well. And uh, it comes with the position. If you're a goalkeeper and you haven't been kicked in the face, then you must know you haven't done it. Really? The face. Listen, it's a norm. Kicked in the face. Yes. Yes. You gotta dive in there with your head, just about everything you heard to stop that ball. And half the time, other are taking players, obviously, they lunge forward. Ooh, it gets to the ball. Mm, that one's missed his face. Yeah, Ooh, yeah later. On his knee. Yeah. That was a lad in the right on his knee then. Eh? Ooh, speaking of goalkeepers getting kicked in the face, you remind me of a game in uh, Mami Lodi. And the Sanders were still playing the games out in Mamilodi. Uh, Brian Baloy was uh, the uh, man between the sticks. My Mani Piri was playing for Morocco Swallows. They were going for 50 50 ball. Yeah. My Mani Piri went for a full swing. Nothing wrong with what he did. Only problem is Baloy got the first and was brave, but he took the ball away from where it was originally and his head took that position. And uh, Piri unwittingly, well, they yeah. kicked him in the face, but it was a horrible injury. Horrible to witness. If if my anything, younger I remember very well, he must have broken his yeah, nose or something. He was yeah. out of action for Horrible. quite a while. The game came to a standstill for a long time. I remember that was uh, one of the uh, most uh, difficult moments for me as a young commentator to watch live at a venue. Gee, don't go, even go there and start counting such kind of moments. Mm. Seeing a leg breaking Oof. right before your eyes. And uh, there are those that I don't want him to remember. A few come to mind now that I don't want to talk about. Dylan Shepard can't help. Swear, swear. Swear. Oh. Mm. 
So, this point is that the uh, Zambians very much in control of their fate, doing what they can to earn themselves a uh, place in uh, the uh, semi-finals. Leading Seychelles by a goal to no. And one of the man who's found the back of the net, if you are just joining us. And things are happening. William Strong went out at the Moses Mumpy, the stadium. Malawi have uh, scored, I'm told, uh, from the uh, penalty. Kawonga. The man that's found the back of the net for the uh, Malawi. So, Malawi came into the uh, game, they topping the group. As they stand, they now move on to nine points. Hmm. Zambia battling now for first second place team permutations keep in mind we may only be able to conclude things properly come tomorrow once we've had the uh, last of the uh, groups in action which is group C today we'll conclude group A and group B So, Shonga, as it stands, Malawi was that important win against the Zambians in the opening day. It's made a huge difference on nine points. Having scored at the Moses Mapita Stadium right now. Hmm. Goals are important now for the Zambians. Yeah. Yes, they're on six points. And uh, uh, Lesotho, of course, is also on six points. Mm -hmm. And the goal difference will matter. And uh, Eswatini also, if they do happen by some miracle, Speech South Africa, yeah. the six. they'll need uh, a good goal difference to be able to be in that sport to count against these two. And let's not forget the Sotu already on uh, six points as well in a Group C. They're in action tomorrow. So we'll have to wait and see how that pans out. As the Apollo is uh, kept moving in by Kambamba. Out to the far side, Zambia do have men in the box here. He's always inviting the early cross and he's busy. He's about as busy as any outfield player out there it is uh, Michel. Possibly busier than some of his teammates is just how many times he's gotten to touch the ball. It is uh, the uh, Seychelles goalkeeper. Now, keeping it moving here the Zambians. We have to win it back and win the set piece. Get a bit of a breather for the uh, Seychelles. And this type of breaks give them the chance to actually help move players that are behind the field. And which is why it took it long because there were a few red shirts looking to receive that ball but didn't go too far. Still there. Mm, nice little turn. Tim to uh, play the one two didn't quite work out then, so Seychelles will, as I say, that is breaks down for them, but try and stay in and around that attacking third. To Simba, down the line here, and, uh, and off the ball incident is the uh, reason why the whistle's gone. Yellow card will be uh, shown here for the uh, challenge on a Kampamba. No risk is the player. It's quite telling us to the uh, work they're having to put in on uh, the not so fun part of the game. And uh, such fouls are being committed now where you are fouling the man who's uh, not even on the ball, William Shonga. If you look at the run he was making, yeah, yeah, it was he would have hurt. Yes. <laughs> so it's like uh, if I can afford to slow him down, because if I don't keep track with him, he might be the recipient of a pass in a more dangerous area. It was the third man running in that case. Here he is with the shot! Oh, Michelle with the save to deny Gambamba. Get alive in the far side. So the Zambians looking to extend their lead again. It's Michelle on the near post. Point he made earlier that uh, he's probably the busiest of all the players of, uh, in terms of goalkeeper. I mean, if you had to bring in Mulenga, nothing to do. 
throughout the 30 whatever minutes that this game is played. 35. I suspect some of his teammates haven't touched the ball as much as he has. Mm. And they're outfield players. As much as Michelle, the goalkeeper, he's getting a touch in every couple of minutes. Not just a cut, a, 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 a touch of the ball, but getting kicked in the process. Mm. Now, earlier. Good hands once again. Not taking a chance to try and hold on. He didn't have to dive, but it was that hard that he preferred to just pile it out and picked it up on the second bite. The boom who in the number 15 jersey has uh, done a responsible job. Oh, they're sitting just in front of that back four, helping them keep it moving and keep their shape. Here he is on the ball now. There's the uh, deep lying midfielder. Simba looking for the one two. Left to right backs so are always looking to push forward into the uh, final third and on the uh, overlapping run. Let's go, Bumbu. So, for the Seychelles, the top goal scorers in the history of the Akosafa. Zielo with four goals. That's over Anakura in years gone by. The biggest win was a heavy win, 7 0 against Mauritius. Some years ago, they took six against Zimbabwe back in 2017. Failed to score in 64% of their matches. Only kept three clean sheets. That's in 9.7% of their matches throughout the history of the tournament, uh, William Jong. And that's quite telling for the uh, Seychelles. Only three clean sheets. Haven't been able to keep a clean sheet in this year's tournament either. Just to put that into perspective for, for you, that's only three clean sheets in what, 32-33 uh, matches? <laughs> Stop going out there for the Seychelles. Now, getting numbers forward here. 34. Going into the game. As a coach, um, you're looking for certain things that maybe will tell you that the team has improved. I mean, one obviously is the main result a win or a loss. Yeah. And uh, you can escalate it to how much you're able to hold on to the ball or number of entries you made. Mm -hmm. But now, you have to scale it down to goals if you're able to score a goal. <laughs> it gets worse. I mean, then you must know if you get to that level, you must know that I can see. Well, let's put it this way. They've only won one match of the 33 they played in the uh, history of the uh, Kosafa Cup and the uh, Seychelles. That's how bleak things have been and how tough things have been for them coming into uh, these uh, championships. 2-6. But the problem is, excuse me, how many goals did they score that day? Seven, I think. Yeah. That was... Uh, that, that, the, I think you have to ask who's the... Who's what happened? I mean, from scoring seven to scoring nothing in so many games who's the opponent it was I think mauritius. It's, an important, it's an important question and uh, it's mauritius and i say that respectfully that was back in 2008 by the way really took six against zimbabwe in 2017. failed to score in 20 matches ahead of this tournament add another two is 22 now and uh, if they don't score in this match, it'll be 23 matches where they've uh, failed to score. Keeping in mind, they played just over 30. They played 33 matches in total. It's not a nice term that we've heard over the years in football, but uh, some teams are seen as the whipping boys of certain leagues or certain tournaments. I think you'll be excused if you refer to the Seychelles. Because in many ways they are. But the thing is, you, you gotta give them a little bit of credit in the way that they always come out. Yeah. 
and we hopefully that every year every year Malawi keep in mind they have extended the lead William Strong to know they're leading out at the uh, Moses Mapida Stadium so chopping done in that regard by Malawi again making a strong statement as uh, one of the teams to be taken seriously as a possible favorite as the Zambians are trying to do here as they uh, keep it moving along getting plenty in the box here Angoluma Shabala to Chisimba Interesting ball into the box it ends up in the uh, arms of Michel Question now, will the Zambians be able to add one more before the uh, halftime break? For they come with the strike that really won't uh, cause any problems. See the intention, try and get that uh, dip. And it uh, wasn't to be in the end. Bamba, interesting ball, just too much onto it. Quite wisely, Michel allowing it to uh, run on for the uh, goal kick. Here is uh, Kampumbu. Seen plenty of it again. Is a Kampamba. Now, and ball in. Is it to be a chance here for the uh, Zambians? Answers no. They shall be able to play it clear. Pascal now. Head up. Looking for movement. Option up to the far side. I believe that's where he's uh, looking to try and get it. To the end, it's too narrow and too straight. The angle comfortable for uh, Lawrence Molenga. No wonder. There will be a minute added on to the end of the uh, first 45. Good hard running here. That's well read uh, for the uh, intercepts. Now, hope for the set piece. Oh, the uh, Seychelles in the end, nothing uh, going their way. The captain Melly was the uh, man who picked it up in the middle of the park. Keep in mind, he is operating in the uh, heart of uh, midfield here today rather than the heart of defense where we've seen him operating for the uh, last two games. Interesting ball and good save. Good positional play as well by uh, Michel. Made up his mind early that uh, he was going to leave his line. Charles make heavy work of uh, getting it clear in the end they are able to do so but don't hold on for too long which has been the story of their half that means now pushing forward trying to get it behind that defense they'll get the uh, set piece 
Yeah, you know what is an invite? You have to get the quality ball in. Zimba, the uh, left back. Is the uh, man in need of some attention here? Tagging of the uh, shirts from uh, Camille wearing the uh, number 15 on his back. Thierry Camille plays for PTL Bazaar Brothers FC out uh, in uh, the uh, Seychelles. His third appearance in uh, these uh, Kasapa Championships. Has over 100 minutes of the uh, game time. So, I might supposed to have seen the most of uh, or the most in the way of game time from uh, the uh, Seychelles. Last attack of the half. Zambia leading by one, looking to make it two. Shot in the end, and Michelle again is positioned well enough here for what looks a comfortable save in the end. That is, in fact, the last attack of what has been a positive half for the uh, Zambians doing what they can here. Whilst Malawi out at the most muppy the stadium are leading by two is Zambia and uh, lead by one here. And of course, we we'll look to stress their lead going into the uh, second half while Seychelles will uh, look to get it together defensively and see what they can launch. Really, including the fans that have come out on the main grandstand on the grass embankments all around the uh, venue here. It's made for a great day of football. Later on, of course, South Africa will be in action against Eswatini. For now, the focus very much on Zambia and uh, Seychelles. Had the upper hand, the uh, Zambians, right through that first half. Seychelles yet to create a goal scoring opportunity, yet to get any action out of uh, Lawrence Menanga between the uh, sticks and as far as getting a save out of it. And, uh, well, Chongwe and I were discussing in uh, the uh, first half. And, uh, well, changes being made here first. Camille. Will I uh, make way for Hubert in the way of the uh, Seychelles? That's just the one change. Second one is uh, Norris making way for Garrick as they uh, try and get it right defensively going forward in trying to create some chances of their own. The Bamba will make way purely on in his place here. Zambia immediately looking to get onto the front foot. Really poorly here. Picked up on this near side. Good block. To create once again here for the uh, Zambians. Now, we uh, discussed various things and mentioned to names, of course, from uh, a Zambian point of view that have come through and had an impact with uh, the uh, Zambian national team. Strong. And uh, amongst the uh, names that uh, came up, of course, was that. Oh, but Harry Milanzi, the, you wondered, and uh, I'll let, let you go back to tell us what you were wondering. The fact that uh, the name sounds so familiar, and uh, it's, it sounded, in fact, it is a name of another Zambian legend mm -hmm. who's a striker, and I was wondering whether they had any form of relationship mm -hmm. in as far as uh, maybe being the junior Harry Milanzi. So... Yeah, take it on. Well, we, uh, well, I was kind, well, I was lucky enough to be contacted then by a man who goes by the nickname of Kappa, real name Kennedy Mweni, who, of course, is the uh, retired legend we were speaking of in the first half, and he confirmed for us, William Chongwe, that uh, Milanzi, the Milanzi you speak of is Milanzi Jr. So thank you very much to Kennedy Mweni for the uh, heads up then and help you making our lives a whole lot easier and keeping you informed and uh, it's things like this the nice gestures like this from kennedy that make him the legend that he is such a nice guy that we have loved to associate ourselves with over the years in this industry let me not forget another colleague of ours here at super sport obviously is involved in zambian football from a commentary point of view 
and uh, that also contributed into as I was walking up uh, coming into commentary I uh, received a whatsapp message from him I'll tell you just now as uh, we keep following the game for you yep, and it's having a pride on the far side really with the ball in then Ngonje, Matimba Ngonje is the player that I'm, uh, is the man that I'm uh, talking about, referring to now. He's obviously the main man on the mic uh, in Zambian football at the moment. I worked with him one time in the semi final game, Chev Cap Champions League. No. So you can imagine how excited I was uh, just uh, having uh, that information confirmed. And uh, we do appreciate you guys uh, just to know that you are watching and listening as well. Please. If there's anything that you can add uh, to just give us more value in what we're doing in some of these games, you're more than welcome. Thank you. Sandy is carrying on here with uh, 10 on the field. The man that's injured for the uh, time being is the uh, goal scorer in uh, Kangwanda. In uh, the uh, meantime, William Chong out uh, in uh, the VIP areas. Zambians have the senior coach. Hey, What's your name? Avram Grant. First came to world fame when uh, he, as a surprise, took over at Chelsea as the uh, main coach. You remember seven years ago? I think it was leading up to the uh, 2010 World Cup in the years before that. Also worked with FIFA. Now, he's had a good game, Michel. He really has. Yeah, you say good, but. Uh as a goalkeeper coach, uh, we don't coach that. <laughs> 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 I see and the you used last time you mean. An orthodox of him, but yeah, listen, yeah. most importantly is that uh, he kept the situation safe. Yeah. That is first and foremost for any goalkeeper. Of course, for any uh, youngsters watching, the uh, man sitting alongside me, not only a great goalkeeper in his time uh, down in Swaziland or Eswatini, as it's known these days, and then in uh, South Africa with all of the big sides, right? Yes. Chiefs, Pirates. Swallows. Swallows. Morocco Swallows. Morocco Swallows, the originators, of course. Uh, you were an agent, correct? Right? Eh? You were an agent. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, went on to become a, a goalkeeper coach to some legendary keepers. And uh, he's at time, he's worked with men that I've gone on to have international careers, including one of the goalkeepers that's uh, here at uh, the uh, Safa Cup with uh, Namibia. Namibia, from um, international from a South African point of view, and many other goalkeepers, of course, throughout his career. One thing he does preach and stands on William Chongwe is goalkeepers keeping it simple. Cut your eyes, cross your teeth, keep it simple. Everything will follow after that. Technique. Yeah. We didn't have this privilege of being coached and uh, about the right things to do. We were naturals. And I'm just trying to imagine. And uh, obviously, my head off to all those that uh, did the trade during our time who had no coaches and yet were standing. And uh, so I'm just trying to imagine we could have maybe done even way better than if we had some of the coaching that is here today. But I've always wondered, Sean, we quickly before we move on back to the game here, but also making this point is the transition to go from the coaching or the schooling you had as a uh, young goalkeeper to the teachings you gave as a goalkeeper coach. Obviously, it was two different worlds. Yes. From what was taught to you to what you are teaching now as a goalkeeper coach. When did you make the transition onto the school of thought you've got now, which is way more professional and uh, way more textbook? So to speak, yeah, that's a term. Textbook. I, I had the privilege of uh, working at Kaiser Chiefs uh, during the days of Brian Baloy, Ryan Fernandez, Emil Baron, and um, Kaiser Chiefs gave me the privilege of bringing the legendary goalkeeper coach Reina Tinkalaika, who I spent three months with at Kaiser Chiefs, mm -hmm. to get the basics. Okay. And of course, I've continued to grow on my own and just learning uh, in the field. 
which is a big part of any coach. Yes, that was yes. the turning point. Yeah. Yes. Kills the a handball given out from the far side. Was it in or outside? I think it was just outside. Just. Just. Just on the foot. And uh, the uh, man that's uh, guilty of uh, giving away the uh, handball is uh, Kerik, who's uh, coming off the uh, bench. It's also been fairly used here by the uh, Seychelles. And it's just about every player that's available to them in uh, this uh, tournament in the uh, three games. Now, Zambia. Look at the stress they lead. Ball in the post. Keep it doesn't hold on. There's a chance. Berry. It was begging to be put away, and quite rightly was. In the end, yeah, as the Zambians go on to score goal number two and make life a little bit easier, on them to grab it, all important three points. Looks as though it's Kamwanda again. We will confirm that for you. In fact, I'm told it's Kwanguluma. The essential uh, defender who would have pushed forward yes. with the simplest of tappings. Quality tap here was eventually, but uh, the goalkeeper had to do quite a bit in trying to avoid that. And unfortunately, not clinical because he only made the block, but that ball didn't go far away. Uh, it was a scramble, but a very important one for the Zambians. Did well here. Kept the school, just punched it into the uh, open space on that goal line with so many over towards the left side or the uh, far side of the goal. And uh, Zambia two to the goal now. Zambia leading, comfortable. Last we heard from out at the Moses Mapila Stadium, Malawi were leading and comfortable. On oh, cue yeah. to get that uh, second spot, that best runners up. Flowing football from the Zambians here. There's another draft coming up. It was flowing football, it was beautiful. It was a wave of a cream going forward into that box, and in the end, Mpamba just couldn't get it on target, but it deserved more than attack. Rolling towards him, and he's standing in one place. I've seen this just so many times. If the ball is going to come to you and find you standing, that ball is more likely to skyrocket to higher above the post. But if you're going forward, that little bit of a step forward just helps you, your body to be a little bit above your foot, which helps then the ball to be aligned with the right height. Heavy touch from Agangwanda. Just trying to set it up for the pass to the run on the far side. So, again, three no or three goals in one match. On the uh, most we've seen so far in the uh, various matches as we look at the uh, group here and uh, look at how things stand. Malawi with a hundred percent record, Zambia. After stumbling against Malawi, they've responded to the best of their ability. They haven't dropped a point since, by the look of it. Won't be dropping a point here today. Yeah. What a game this man is having. He really is enjoying himself in his Kambamba. Also ask questions of a Michelle and two or three occasions in the first half. He had that opportunity earlier in uh, the uh, half year that went high of the mark just a few moments ago. There's a lovely pass. He's brought on towards this near side. He's enjoying himself. Oh, good hard running here. Could be a chance coming up. Okay, back across and problems for the Seychelles as Zambia. Go on to score a third.
It's Masata who's uh, popped up just before the hour mark, Sean. And uh, with uh, Michelle doing all he can to keep the Zambians at bay, he's uh, being overrun by the wave of green that's constantly coming at him. Unfortunately, trying to save from across makes it difficult for him to hold on to it. But numbers, what, what has made the big difference is uh, just the conviction that the Zambia are playing with, getting to that area with numbers. Can only do so much. Still a valiant effort to try and deny him. I in the end, he's taking him out after the striker has gone on to find the back of the net. And with Evan Grant watching on, the man who originates from Israel. It's uh, the uh, Zambians now that are cruising. We are told that the uh, senior coach, Evan Grant, did go to the change room at half time. <laughs> Presence would have been false. Well, they came out different, smoking. right? Came yeah. Out smoking. <laughs> but they say he's one of the nicest, nicest coaches that I've heard in a long time. He likes to jog, and uh, he tries to reduce the tension part of the game. And uh, he's always got a lot to say about, obviously, his um, uh, life before coming down to Zambia, his coaching experience. There were everybody when he's around is always listening to all the great stories of the past. the uh, majority of his career college coaching and managing in Israel winning a uh, number of uh, National League and Cup victories with different teams also I've uh, been in charge of the uh, Israeli national team as uh, Avram Grant born in Petah Tikva out uh, in uh, Israel back in uh, 1955 well into the 60s now and who's uh, coach Afel Petah Tikva Maccabi Tel Aviv, Apel Haifa, Maccabi Tel Aviv again, Maccabi Haifa, I think there's been a South African two that have played for Maccabi uh, Haifa. Israel, Chelsea, Portsmouth, Western United, Partizan Belgrade, Ghana, as well as uh, North uh, East United. I mentioned he was a uh, technical director of BEC Terror Sasana, he's also worked with the FIFA. Led uh, Ghana to the uh, semi-finals of the 2017 Africa Cup of Nations. Of course, in India, the uh, Indian Super League, by the way, as uh, Evan Grant. Been around the block and then some.
So, Zambia now. Three to the good. Been looking to get your opinion in that strong way. Maybe I should wait towards the latter stages of the game if he is still on the field at that point. But let you uh, think it over for the uh, time being. The man wearing the number seven out there on the ball right now. He's a contribution on the day. How telling it is from your point of view, Kampamba. Someone done another that's had a good day, but also the number seven, not the overlapping run, uses a decoy, the shot takes a deflection, and uh, Michelle is a little labored <laughs> in uh, recovering to uh, cover that ball and smother it. I think his body's taking strain now. I don't think he's eating away at the clock now. I think he's taking a breather, much needed breather, William Shaw. It looks like the ball took a deflection in the way yep. he dived. Yep. It's almost like uh, he went ahead of the shot. Oh, you know what? He may have taken a knee to the face as well. <laughs> you mentioned these sort of industry, uh, injuries, William Shangwe. As he gathers the ball and covers it up, it's the Zambian that's coming across, and I think there could have been a knee to the face. That's the reason why he stayed down. So I take back my words earlier about him needing a breather. I think he's genuinely injured, and I apologize to him for that. He's still my hero. Michelle. In the way that he's been brave. Yeah. In the way he's been in the wars. Look at, at this. Watch closely as he falls on the ball. Not now, but at this point. There's a player coming across. There's the contact. Ah. Yeah, and the, the heels side. as well. Yeah. To the side of his head. But now, others will say, the challenge of a goalkeeper is to be able to get up the quickest. Uh, so that he can uh, gather the ball as it was loose and it was within the attacker's right to pounce onto it. So the ex some of the exercise that uh, coaches do is to help the goalkeeper spring back to action as quick as you can. I think uh, they... He was like trying yeah. and yeah. getting up and eventually he did. But he had been quicker. The striker would have given up. Well, he was hopeful <laughs> coming into this game. Well, as we've been bored, and like uh, you and I agreed a few days earlier, we live in hope, William Shaw. Indeed. Like, uh, like, like I asked him, if you look at all other, the other teams that didn't have a chance against some of the, the better teams or position teams in the region, and yet they were able to get wins, Mauritius, Eswatini against Namibia, and I think at a time when Namibia was flying away, having played so well against uh, Bafana Bafana. But it, it happened. So he, he would have been he wouldn't have been fooled uh, to think that uh, it can happen to me as well. But uh, it's proving to be very difficult. Pull in then and coming in on the blind side was a gangwanda. Couldn't muscle his way through, but uh, caught enough discomfort to win the corner for the Azambians. Seven in the box. Yes, she spoke about players and the Zambian side. Uh, that would have been a very impressive throughout the, the competition. Yes, Kangwanda is one for me, and uh, Kambamba is the other. And uh, combo as well. Mm -hmm. um, I'm talking about the attackers this time. Obviously, Kapung in that center of the midfield. The yeah. general. Yes. The ever present in front of the big four. Mm -hmm. And it's key to have uh, players like You can see he plays with a lot of experience. He's a, he's a part of the senior squad that plays the uh, uh, bigger competitions. He was a part of the squad that won against the uh, quarter ball. Now, I've asked this question because it's so easy to say, look, they played well, and to dismiss the good work they've done and say, yeah, but they were up against the Seychelles. No disrespect to Seychelles, and I mean saying so. But then again, look at Angola yesterday. They were up against what was seen as minnows and couldn't come up with the goods in the win. Mauritius, Eswatini, and the others have uh, done the business in punching above their weight. So it's one thing to be favorites going into a game. It's another to play well collectively as a group where three four five of you are having outstanding games 
and uh, you win with uh, what is now joint the highest scoring win of the uh, tournament at 3 0 William Chongwe. Another goal from the from the Zambians and they will beat the Komodo 3 0 win as the highest scoring side in one match in this year's tournament. Just taking them a bit of time to pick up to this yes. level. Better with every game. Yeah. Again, in looking at statements being made here, Malawi making a serious statement out at the uh, Moses Mapida Stadium. Zambia are making a statement here in Guamashu. That's good movement on the uh, far side and pushing forward here. The one two. Hoping to lead up to a rare chance of gold here for the uh, Seychelles. And I mean that a rare chance of gold. They've hardly created any. Joy in and around the final third. third. Could be their first shot in anger in this match. Just want to confirm that for you. Occasion has been made. No surprise then. Nangwanda has done the business, he's caught the call. Why not? Take some time off. Milanzi will come on in his place. Harry Milanzi, Sean Junior. <laughs> Thanks again, Kennedy Mwini. Piri, the uh, next man uh, on, or rather. Osamu. Son Gosamu, that is. Wholesale. Labrosse. Who will uh, come on here? Brendan Labrosse. Who was featured in both previous games as a striker. Yep. Top man. So we've just had a goal kick following that shot at goal, William Chong, from the Seychelles. 70 minutes is taken for the Seychelles to have a shot at goal. It was wide of the mark, never really caused problems, but in 70 minutes of football, they hadn't gotten into a shooting position. No fun. It's no fun when you're playing football and those are the stats you're looking at. You're not having a good time at all. I think, uh, uh, I think two days back, guys, man. I mentioned Skara's ability and how he was outstanding. Skara Tinto, that is of the Kingdom of the Satin yeah. then. And uh, here's the thing about him Skara didn't need, if the team was doing bad, Skara had the ability to take four, five, to yeah, defend, on, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and score a goal. So you see, he made up for the lack of <laughs> <laughs> the others. And I unfortunately, Mauritius uh, don't have that number of players in the field that can individually create those scoring opportunities. And I think uh, that's what Messi does as well. He, sometimes he will play against a team that's excellent defensively, but he'll open them up on his own. Now, pull in. Peter from uh, the Seychelles. And this is where the legendary. A Zambian player we were talking about Godfrey. Mm -hmm. uh, the comparison between uh, Walia and Godfrey Chitral. Yes. yes. He also had that same ability, uh, Godfrey Chitral. Yeah. Uh, I, know, I know I'm talking to people that have never seen him, so they won't even understand what I'm talking about. That man could pick up the ball around the same line and just press through the middle, minusing people on the way. Shot. shot to go 14 to 1 and just driving the point when we're making mm. on target 6 to nothing. Now, chance for goal number 4 and there you have it, the Zambians, highest scoring side so far at this year's Kusapa Cup having scored 4, another flowing move then and the ball played in, arriving in the uh, nick of time. 
to uh, send it home is uh, Molambia. But that has been the case. I think most of the goals, except for the first one that came from a long range strike, most of them have been finishes from closer range. The art of attacking in numbers in the box. Mm. Driving run on the far side, beauty of a ball into the near post and through the legs of Bishop. He'll be disappointed with that one. The last thing you want to concede is a goal through your legs. Because so Zambia scoring goals here. And uh, looking as though they'll uh, continue to uh, do so. I'll tell you what, for those that have turned out a little bit early, ahead of the uh, South Africa Eswatini game, that uh, kicks off at 6 o'clock this evening, will uh, have uh, been uh, rewarded with uh, an entertaining game here. Good game of football from the Zambians. They haven't let up. Similar to what we saw from uh, Malawi a few days ago, where they hit the ground running, and once they established a tempo, just didn't let up on it. Kept plucking away at their opponents, and bit by bit, all resistance crumbled. Would you then agree with me? With the goal scored now, it puts a Zambia in the best possible position to make up the four. Yep. Here they are again, looking for more. As to make up the four semi-final places. Yes. Oh, it puts them in a great position. We'll still uh, have to wait and see what will happen tomorrow. And as far as Group C. But, uh, yeah, they are owning... The situation to the uh, best of their ability all they could do is win and win well William Chong they're winning extremely well here and they're not done but they come again by nine for the challenge corner talk about consistent pressure wave after wave of attack they've uh, given nothing nothing to the Seychelles taking absolutely everything from them Seychelles guilty of losing in a dangerous area. Not punished for it. But uh, they want to avoid such mistakes where they're making life easy for their opponents. Hmm. That's time to find the space on the far side here. As uh, the Zambians uh, push on through, driving forward. Football once again from that far side. Eventual shot from range makes for a comfortable save from Michelle. So, for the Seychelles, keep in mind they have been a part of this tournament since the year 2005, haven't missed the tournament since the year 2005 and ever since the involvement in the Yakuza Cup with every tournament that's gone by they haven't got beyond the group stages well it looks like Michelle is being substituted here well and not I for guess the first time those two swap places yeah but in this case I guess that well, knock yeah. into his face might have uh, that's the first time we've seen Romy Parayachi Coming on, it's been uh, the uh, other reserve keeper that's uh, been used in uh, L'Esperance. Romy, or Romeo Barayachi now, the uh, third keeper used uh, by the Seychelles at this year's tournament. 
a chance to be able to give him a chance. His travel has been with the team for so long, and uh, this is a lost cause as it stands. So, give him that experience. Is his first touch of the tournament. So, for the Seychelles, 12, Victor 13. Because Africa tournaments they've been to, to 30, never be on the group stages. Just the one win in all their matches thus far. In this year's tournament, wins as uh, well as goals have been extremely hard to come by. Habits with Dean Montep, who's amongst those who have come in off the bench, looking to get involved in the middle of the park. Error made on the near side by uh, Fanchet. Planning wasn't bad from Vivian Butts. Uh, planning into this game. I mean, I mentioned that he moved the melody central defender a little bit higher to try and see if he could slow down mm. the action from the uh, uh, Zambians, but uh, that didn't work. But in his mind, he thought, you know what? Yes, we want to go forward, but we also need to brace ourselves up in defense. Well, the uh, difference in a class between these two nations and exactly where they are on uh, the uh, continent in the hierarchy of uh, African football is very clear. Never mind in the hierarchy of Southern African football is Zambia right there at the top. Now, lovely work on the far side and is this the moment for the Seychelles? Answers, yes! Oh, it's banged home then! After a lovely bit of strength to uh, win the ball back and okay. composure to drive it on home then from La Brosse. It's a great goal to be able to report. But uh, look at what happens on that first side. I think he cluttered into the defender with his hands, which uh, obviously forced them to fall. Now, look at this for me. There were a number of fouls. He's holding first, and then, would you call it that, a body check? I think the defender tried to check him and lost his footing. Hmm. And the second time, yes, there's a uh, little pull at first. Yes. But I think this stumble is caused by the defender. Listen, that's character. He's fresh, of course. He's just made his way in. And he was he's the more reliable uh, striker in all that he's been able to put. But it's just that he's been playing too many games. And they've only had a day to recover. So that could be one of the reasons why he didn't start. So, Seychelles, well, for a bit of a spanner in the works here, and uh, what was a cruising moment for the uh, Zambians, they uh, scored their first goal since uh, last year's. Because have a cup where they scored against the Comoros in their last week game, losing uh, by a 2-1 uh, scoreline. And yet was the man who has scored for them then. Before that, you have to go back six matches for the uh, last time they scored in, um, in a uh, Kosovo Cup game in Pulogwani where Kibuk has scored against uh, Mozambique in 2018 out in Pulogwani they just scored one in every game then in uh, Durban last year didn't score or Durban the year before last in 2019 in fact to be exact didn't score in either over the three games Last year scored in the last of their three games, and here they are again scoring in uh, the last of their three games. The uh, Seychelles at this year's tournament change yeah. made by the uh, Zambians, and uh, it's up and up. So wins are hard to come by year by year, goals are hard to come by, William Strong, year by year. It's not out of the question to see them come through, play a group stage 
and leave without seeing them score a goal. Never mind register a win. The goals are like the pot at the end of a rainbow for them. As I said earlier, pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. I'm sure come end of the tournament, they'll walk away with that little bit of pride to say, you know what, we're able to score. Mm -hmm. and against the mighty Zambia. Against the mighty Zambia. How important will that call be in the overall picture song? When we start whipping out the calculators and seeing where Zambia's place is in the place of the best second place finishes. This is by far the highest scoring game we've had in this year's tournament. Five goals scored now, beating the previous record of three by two. and uh, just holding on to the ball here the uh, Zambians it's an exercise that you can use in a real game scenario just to see how long can the team hold the ball and that can be a challenge for some of the players they'll get obviously too comfortable and start uh, taking it too easy but you want to use that exercise in a real game scenario whereby the tensions are just as high and if you're able to come through then you can say well Let's try and work, our, work the ball higher, a little bit into the midfield and see if we can keep it longer in that section. Keep in mind that uh, 6 o'clock this evening is the uh, big one. South Africa up against Swatini, where Shongwe and I will work alongside each other in commentary but in different rooms for obvious reasons. <laughs> 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 up against a hard running Eswatini side just how much can Bafana Bafana hold mm -hmm. that will be the challenge yes they'll control the game with the passing game and all that but uh, they'll be made to run Eswatini knows one way how to play play the ball forward proof to be the undoing of Namibia well, South Africa did the uh, business in the second round uh, match in uh, the uh, group, that being group A. That's what he did likewise with both those nations coming up with important wins going into the uh, match that will be coming up later this evening. Shade now getting longer and longer. Here in Aguama as we uh, get close to uh, sundown. Seychelles now. Maybe encouraged by their goal they've scored to try and push forward and find another. Well, they're defensively here. What a story it would be if the Seychelles were to score one or two more here before the end of proceedings just to make things interesting for the neutrals. And here they are with the pressure. Uh, it's, uh, Leading to errors, and is that a penalty given away? It is. The Zambians have played themselves into trouble 
And thanks to the closing down from the Seychelles, right from the front, Mulenga has gone and given away a penalty. Dean Martin, amongst those pushing forward, yellow card it will be for Mulenga. And uh, while well, they were sitting at 4 0, just a moment ago, they take forever in uh, playing it out from the back and invite the Seychelles forward. Heavy touch, late for the tackle, penalty, Seychelles. Wow, as I was saying, the Seychelles would love just one more, just to down the party. Out in the uh, Zambian camp tonight, they've got the opportunity. It's the captain that stands over it. Meli. Up against Mulenga. Seychelles looking to make it two. We'll have to go back some time for the last time they scored two goals. And there you have it, they've scored two. First time they've scored two since 2008 when they had that 7 little win over Mauritius. Their highest scoring game. They also scored two in a 4-2 uh, loss to Namibia back in 2013 when uh, Ziela scored a couple of goals. Other than that, it's been hard going for the St. Charles in trying to find matches where they've scored two. There they are with two against Zambia. And, well, the Zambians have no one to blame but themselves. Definite penalty. Keeper sent the wrong way. And Seychelles now would, uh, would love to have another twist in the tail. What if they were to score one more? Yeah, they are pushing forward. Like up four sides. <laughs> Funny old game is a football. Nineteen games. Make that twenty. Since Seychelles last scored a, a couple of goals in uh, the uh, Kosafa Cup. It's a long time. It's a lot of football played. Good number of years, but here they are against the Zambians scoring a couple of goals. makes things interesting. They were very much in the driving seat and as far as being the uh, best second place team, the Zambians now will have to wait and see. A couple of lapses in concentration, a couple of goals for the Seychelles and suddenly everything hangs in the balance again. Wow, what an ending to this game from a Seychelles point of view. The highest scoring game we've seen so far.